What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about the new world order and how I feel that it's going to impact the economy for the next 10 years or even longer. But before we get in that, I want to address a few things. Today I went to go see my kidney doctor and Monday I go see my cardiologist and I've seen some stuff in the comments. This is what's going on with me. My health has dramatically improved since 2019. My kidney function was like 15% at one point. Today, it is almost at 50%. My kidney doctor is over the moon thrilled and I've actually been able to come off some of my medications. So tomorrow I start working out because, man, for the longest time, man, it, this year has just been a bear with the liquidation of the rental cars and me getting sick and gout flare ups. It's just been, and you know, now I feel like myself. And also I'm taking less medication and I am getting better because I'm a compliant patient. You know, my doctors tell me to do something, I actually do it. So for all of you people who've, uh, some people have left some comments uh, I'm okay. I'm really okay. And I'm glad to say that I'm okay. And to get off into the meat of this video, I've been thinking, I've been really, really thinking, why did all of this happen? I firmly believe that the COVID virus was manufactured by man. So go ahead and enroll at the intellectual property school the link's in the description, or it should be in the first comment, and you can get 65% off until June 30th, and then you get access to home economics, and you get access to a lot of other cool stuff, because there's, there's so much that is coming. There's so much that's coming. So I will see you guys in the intellectual property school, because there was nothing in nature, and things that happen in nature there's usually a counter agent or an antidote in nature. It just, things don't happen like that in nature. And the fact that we had to create an antidote for this man-made virus, I believe this uh, COVID virus was part of the new world order. And I don't even think it was China. I think it comes, cause once again, the Bilderbergers, the new world order, there's this small group of yet extremely powerful people who dictate what goes on in the world. And what we're having right now is the ramifications of the new world order because the United States of America, which argumentally is still the greatest country on the planet, has been under attack since 1969. It used to be here in America you didn't even have to graduate high school. You could go work in a factory. You could go up to Detroit. You could achieve a middle-class lifestyle. You could get married, have children, send your kids to college and work one job. That was America. And I feel that that was a threat because to have a system and it was a system, make no mark, make no bones about it. It was a system where, common people could graduate to middle class without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for a college education, without going back to school, just go work in the company, start working in the mailroom, and you could work your way up to VP. That was the America that we used to have. And that is the America that has been attacked under assault. And to get even deeper, I don't think that the delusion or the destruction of the nuclear family was an accident. I don't think this is something that just happened because the first people who were going after the nuclear family was what was uh, Madison Avenue marketers because women, women and gay men spend more money than heterosexual men. And these marketers understood that if we can get that man out the house, we can get more money out that woman. And 
I feel that this just started as a money grab and then it got worse and it got worse and it got worse and I think they lost their way because the destruction of the nuclear family is the reason that we have a surging homeless problem. Because once again, I grew up in Adamsville, Alabama. And to some in the comments, I attended Bottenfield Middle School. I went to Minor High School. And at one point I went to Vestavia. And at one point I went to Holy Family. And when I was growing up, there were no homeless people in my neighborhood. There were none. And it was because people had family. And the bedrock of family was the husband and the wife. And I'm, a, I'm about to say something. I'm about to go somewhere. We live in a culture where men date women that fits the approval criteria of their friends versus dating women that fit their criteria. And I feel that this was something that was marketed to men because I remember going to my aunt's and uncle houses and seeing a picture of a good looking man married to an average woman, uh, average woman who had lots of um, character, had a lot of uh, quality, had a lot of, she was just a good solid woman. And we have moved from that to where men want to wipe, wipe up porn stars and strippers. I want you to think, we went from men marrying solid women to men now wanting to marry porn stars and strippers. And uh, th this, this is one of the craziest things that I have ever seen in terms of society and you know the breakdown the um the fabric of society because these people want to marry a stripper or a porn star and i was watching the video where this guy had married a porn star, he divorced her, shocking. Cause I'm, I'm about to share some with you. You know, I'm in the kinky lifestyle, but I've never had an urge to see a woman that I had an emotional attachment to. I never ever wanted to see a woman that I had an emotional attachment to have sex with another man. As kinky as I am, all the things I've done, and at the most, I've done a threesome, but I've never participated in the swingers lifestyle uh, when it made no, it made no sense to me. Um, from my standpoint as a dominant masculine heterosexual male, it, it made no sense to me whatsoever. And one of the things, um, um, I just never entered my mind to see a woman that I was in love with get dicked down by another man. And this is the de-evolution of society because you have all of these guys who want to be with a porn star, who want to be with a stripper, who want to be with an escort because it's hot and it's hip. And that right there is, in my estimation, beyond crazy. But once again, I think this is all part of a plan because I have a friend and I'm gonna share this with you. He and his wife were interested in swinging and, and other things, right? And he asked me my opinion and his wife wanted to be participant in a gangbang. And I told him, and if you don't know what a gangbang is, it's one woman and multiple men, like five, six, seven, or in some cases, 30 men going one after another. And you know, his wife wanted to gangbang and I said, don't do it. Because what's gonna happen is your wife is gonna get digged down by someone and she's gonna have a look on her face. She's gonna moan a certain way. And I don't know if you can handle that another man giving your woman more pleasure than you can give her. And he ignored my advice and they went to this thing 
And then Mandingo came in and he heard his wife make noises and scream and moan like she's never moaned in her life. And he immediately understood what I was talking about because if you are a normal heterosexual male, if you're normal, there are some people who are wired differently, but if you're normal, um, that's the last thing you want to see. You don't even want to hear about sexual partners your, your girl had. It's like, yeah, you know she did it, but we ain't going to talk about it. And for women, women, uh, I've, got the, I've got the situation where I get the most territorial women. Like literally, if I start dating a girl and it gets serious, she will go around my house and she will get rid of the earrings because women are always leaving stuff at your house. And from a natural proclivity, men do not want to see other men with their woman and women don't want to see other women, women with their man. And we've gotten into this de-evolution of society where that's become commonplace. And you see it on some of these MGTOW channels talking about never get married unless your wife is going to be comfortable having a threesome. Like I said, I am kinky as they come. I've done some things. I've been participant of many situations, but I get married. There will not be any threesomes. There will not be any wife swapping. There will be no gang bangs. It's going to be me and it's going to be her. And that brings me to the genesis of my conversation here that we're just having because we're just chatting. I'm chatting with you. I believe that all of this stuff has been manufactured and marketed to the average man and woman as the best thing ever, because I was looking at Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald because I was making classic fucking music, classic fucking music. And they wouldn't make it today because of the way they look, even though they were extremely talented, they wouldn't make it today. And we have become a very visual oriented society where people will forego substance for the superficial. And this is one of the things that is destroying America. Because if you look back at your grandfather, your great grandfather, some cases your father, they married average to normal looking women and they stayed married and they were really happy. And we, we've come to a place where I believe that society is hyper sexualized. And I mean that in a case where, you know, some people say they don't want to share my videos because of the sex stories and stuff. Uh, if you have a kid who is nine years old and they have access to the internet, they, they've seen porn. They've seen it. They already know that you ain't protecting them from nothing unless you don't allow them to have a cell phone to access to the internet. So this is what I'm talking about with the hyper sexualization of the world, because even though I am very kinky, I understand how to have a relationship and I will share something that happened recently in my life. Once again, I got people who are upset because of my social experiment, even though I've been doing social experiments on this channel since 2009. Um, I met someone and as you know, there was someone I was seeing. And when you meet someone, and this is the worst thing to happen to a married person, for them to meet someone that they connect with better than they connect with their husband or wife. And I, I met someone and we, we, we've really connected on a deep level to the point that the girl I was seeing, she got dumped. And it wasn't a casual or light decision. It was just like, and this is the thing. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. The girl that I dumped from a visual standpoint is hot as hell. She's hot. Long hair, hooker body. And the girl that knocked her, that's a pimp term, 
you know, when a pimp gets knocked, she's skinny. She, she's got very small breast, not much of a booty, but there is fucking and there is spiritual fucking. And spiritual fucking is nothing to mess around with. You get into the spiritual fucking, man, it will move. It will move heaven and earth. And because, you know, we, we, we talk about it and she's like, I have never come like this with other men. And once again, I dump someone that if I because I'm not showing any pictures of anyone I'm dating on the Internet anymore. If I showed you pictures, y'all been like, man, why'd you let that bad bitch go? You couldn't understand it. But see, I'm at a point where I'm going to do what makes Glendon Cameron happy. And if you don't like what Glendon Cameron likes, Glendon Cameron doesn't care because Glendon Cameron is a grown ass man. And this is the conversation that we need to have because we have a lot of children masquerading as adults. And this is part of the de-evolution of society. And this is part of a diabolical plan to separate society because trans. If I had a child that came to me and said, you know, I had a young boy and he said, dad, I feel like a girl. And I was like, you know what? I understand. I appreciate what you just told me, but you are a biologically, you are a boy. And as long as you live in this house, you're going to dress and look like a boy until you're 18. And then when you move out and if you still have this urge or feeling, and I'm going to go somewhere with this, then you can start participating in this trans lifestyle. There's a documentary where many people who identified as trans and their parents let them participate in the trans lifestyle later on regretted it. I'm talking about men who had their penises surgically cut off and they later figured out that they were just gay. And they, they were very, very unhappy because they made this, because here's the thing. As a child, you don't have the capacity to make such a life altering decision. In my opinion, you just don't. And if I had a child who came to me, it's like, you could do that when you're 18. You're not going to do that in my house because like, I understand. I love you. I understand. You may feel some pain. We can talk about it anytime you want to talk about it. We can talk about it, but you are a boy or you are a girl. Biologically, there's, there's two genders. There's two genders. There's not four or five. There's two men, women, those are the two genders. And we've come in this situation where we have men participating in female sporting events and literally slaying the women because they're men. And this is how far that we have gotten away from common sense because we don't want to offend the trans community, which is extremely small community, extremely small community. And we part of the new world order is complete and social unrest and destruction in this these ways because I I'm 55 years of age and I can remember how America used to be. I can remember I can remember watching black and white movies on television. I remember how America used to be and I can compare and contrast that to the way America is right now and I do not recognize the country that I was born in. And this whole new world order is bent on complete and other disruption. And I believe the destruction of the nuclear family, because you got to ask yourself, why are divorce laws so one sided for females? This didn't just happen. Someone had to sit down and write these laws and agree to these laws. And I guarantee you, that the, the powers that be behind the new world order were 100% behind this because in earlier, the, recently it's become out. If a man goes to court, he has a very good chance of getting custody because of the rights of the men's rights activists. And they've worked really hard for decades to get things changed. But in the beginning, who wrote these laws? Why did they make them so one-sided? And to quote Aries Spears, 
why this bitch getting so much money? Because uh, one of the things that I see, and I'll share something with you. Um, I had a woman who intentionally got pregnant and our agreement was I would take care of the child during the day and she'd take care of the child at night. That was our agreement. She didn't want to do that. What she wanted was a check. And it got to the whole point where she actually assaulted me. I called the police and my big mistake was not having her arrested. And then the next day she come back, she left the state and I've not seen her or the child since. But what's the first thing that she did when she got up to where she got up to? She filed for child support instantly. And because I had emails and I, 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 we talked about it, I was able to get my child support case dismissed. And that's where it stands to this day, because this is part of the new world order. She wanted to actually have total and absolute control over that child and have me pay her money. She did not want to share that child. She did not want to share responsibility with that child. Right. And I look at the creation of the female savage and the female savage is a manufactured product of the new world order. I'm bad. I'm sassy. I can do what I want. I'm an independent woman. I'm a boss chick. And the new world order, I think, has miscalculated because they went too far. Because right now, with the great globe, because we have the new world order and we have the global reset, the global reset is making women abandon that I'm a boss chick. Women are becoming more compliant. And women, like, once again, mark my words, the number of women that will enter into sex work in the next 10 years is going to explode. That chick that you wanted to take out for a nice steak dinner and she wouldn't give you the time of day, five years from now, you can knock that out the park for 50 bucks because she's going to need money. And what th th this is unintended consequences because the New World Order had an agenda for this one thing and then the the <laughs> <laughs> so with these unintended consequences this is throwing a monkey wrench in the new world orders plans and the new world the new world order has to uh, sit back and re-strategize and they have to come up with a new plan. Because all the stuff that we're seeing, the recession, the COVID, all this is part of the this this is the, this has the fingerprints of the new world order all over it. And we have this inflation, and then we're we're having these massive layoffs, and we are having um this total disruption of the global supply chain. We, we have all of this stuff that is going on and the new world order is behind it. And I don't think that people are going to take this laying down. I don't think that people are going to, um, understand or I, I think there's going to be a, a revolution I think that once with the global reset and all these people who are set I think that people are going to be marching in the streets for change I feel that in about a year or two we're going to have a massive revolution of people pushing back upon the, the global reset pushing back upon the new world order and it's because see People are going to get to a point where they're going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. They're going to get um, 
They're just going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. This is one of the things that I see coming. I, this is one of the things I see happening. And um, it is crazy that the changes that I see, the things that I see are happening, the things that I see um, coming to be, coming to fruition is crazy. I just see it. And you know, I'll be talking about this more in the future because this is this this is such a big topic and there's so many facets to talk touch upon. So yeah. This video was brought to you by Intellectual Property School, where I'm gonna teach you how to start a small YouTube channel, make save money on your taxes and make money with a small YouTube channel and teach you all of my ways that I've been making money since 2009. Because intellectual property is an arena where you can create a mini monopoly, where you people can only get the products from you. They can't go over here to Ed, they can't go over here to Susie. They have to come to you to get your products. And you are gonna create such an awesome situation that, um, it's going to be crazy. So go ahead and enroll at the Intellectual Property School. The link's in the description, or it should be in the first comment, and you can get 65% off until June 30th, and then you get access to home economics, and you get access to a lot of other cool stuff, because there's, there's so much that is coming. There's so much that's coming. So I will see you guys in the Intellectual Property School.